Hey what's going on guys, my name is Agent Psycho. This video we're going to bring you the review on the M107 CQ family, or as the GP standard rifle is called, the M107 CQ. This rifle is basically more or less the 50 caliber Barrett that you may have seen in other games like Call of Duty and you know other popular first person shooters. It's basically the same model. Um, the M107 CQ is just, or the M107 designation, I think it's its official designation. Um, I know there's supposed to be like a discrepancy between the M107 and the M82, but um, for now, we'll just call it the 50 caliber Barrett because no one can dispute that. It's a 50 caliber sniper rifle and it's made by Barrett. There you go. So, um, that's for its real life introduction. It's a 50 caliber bear, uh, sniper rifle made by Bear Arms. I think that's what their company name is. I think. I'm not. I'm. I'm. Do not trust me on that. I'm just going with this off the flow, but I do know that it's a bear sniper rifle because it's a pretty famous design. If you've. This is like. To me. In my mind, the M107 is kind of like your. Your classic. 50 caliber design. I don't know. It, to me, it just kind of feels like it. Um, I guess, in my opinion, the most distinctive feature is the fact that its magazine um, size is just so big. Like, that's the most distinctive feature of the Barrett sniper rifle by far. That, you know, you can clearly see how thick the bullets are that you're shooting with that thing. <laughs> some some 50 caliber um, sniper rifles, kind of like, it's kind of hard to tell if they're actually 50, if they're shooting like 50 caliber um, cartridges or 50 BMGs or whatever. The M107, it ain't shy about showing people what it's what it's firing. Like you can pull out that mag. Like you don't even need to pull out the mag in order to see inside just how big the 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 bullets are. You can just tell by the length. That's pretty scary. But in any case, enough of the in real life information. Let's move on to the statistics and the information of the M107 CQ as it as it um pertains to combat arms. So again starting with the general information the M107 CQ after the reboot patch operation or reboot operation patch I should say got those mixed up it now no longer has a requirement which is very very surprising because before the patch um, or before the reboot operation the M107 CQ had the one of the highest um, GP standard uh, rank requirements in the game I believe yes uh, according to Commons Wiki it had a rank requirement of Captain 1 it's Ridiculous. Highest rank requirement in the game for any gun that had the GP standard de designation. Um, but now, for whatever reason, Nexon has decided to remove, completely remove the rank requirement on the M107 CQ. So now it is available to anyone at any rank. You can, as, so, as soon as you make a new account, you can buy or you can technically rent the M107 CQ, which is very interesting because the M107 CQ, um, when it was first released in the form of the M107 CQ SC, which is the next standard variant of the M107 CQ, um, was considered by many to be a really, really powerful sniper rifle, like almost a point of overpoweredness. In fact, I remember uh, when, if you guys remember Backstar at all, when he still was doing Gun Arms videos, um, when this was released, he made a review on it using his, I think, his brother's account, and said that the M107 CQ is one of the most overpowered sniper rifles in the game. If not, over, if he didn't say overpowered, it was definitely he did definitely say it was one of the strongest. And uh, there's definitely some merit to this because. It does have a lot of qualities that make this that make it a really strong uh, one-shot sniper rifle. But we'll go into that later in detail as the review progresses. Uh, as for its monetary concerns, like how much uh, money it costs for one day, it does cost 1,100 GP for one-day rentals, uh, which is admittedly better than its old price tag because before it did cost 1400 GP for one day rental which um, I think was the same amount of GP as the old l 6 a one I don't know how much the l 6 a one costs now but uh, definitely the M107CQ does cost less than it did before if that makes you happy at all. Um, as for its uh, purchase, not rental, but purchase, it does cost 410 NX for one day and 9900 uh, NX for perm, which is very, which actually is kind of surprising because now instead of buying the M107 CQSC for permanent, um, you could just buy the original M107, uh, M107 CQ for permanent, and you can save like over. 1100 or 11,000 X or something like that because essentially the M107 CQ and the M107 CQ SC are basically the same. Um, in fact, all M107 variants are basically the same as the original M107. There really isn't a lot of other, uh, a lot of you know, significant stat changes, um, you know, 
among the M107 variants. I mean, if you really care about, you know, accuracy, I mean, I guess you could go for the Air Force or the even the M107 CQS at Gilly, but it's obviously really hard to get that. So, um, if you are interested in buying the M107 CQ for permanent, um, and you were thinking about buying the M107 CQSC before the reboot patch came around, um, you it might actually be a good idea to just simply straight up buy the M107 CQ for perm because this and the SC designation are basically the same. I think the only real change between this and the SC uh, variant is the fact that the SC comes with an additional magazine of 5 bullets, so technically your bullet count goes up from 20 bullets uh, to an overall amount of 25 with the SC variant, but if you don't care about ammo, if that doesn't concern you at all, just buy the M107 CQ. It's basically the same thing. So, now that we've got the monetary stuff out of the way, let's talk about the stats. The M107 CQ has a damage rating of 100, so it's obviously a one-shot sniper rifle, or it's supposed to be anyway. It has a very, very low portability of 30, a slow rate of fire of 10, and actually of 91. This Again, this is according to Combat's Wiki, and a recoil of 66. So, so, looking at these stats, we can definitely see it's a one-shot sniper rifle. So, if you guys are looking for a one-shot sniper rifle, or if, if you guys have never really seen or used this gun at all, and you're wondering, oh, is this a one-shot sniper rifle? Definitely it is. The portability, though, is among the slowest, or the port the very low portability on M107 makes it one of the slowest weapons in the entire game. I don't, I don't know if there's any other weapon or item in the game that uh, makes you run slower than M107 CQ, which is understandable because you're carrying on a freaking M like a freaking 50 caliber sniper rifle, which obviously is extremely heavy in real life. Um, so. The fact that the M107 does have a very low portability rating doesn't really surprise me too much. It doesn't anger me. I think it's balanced. Um, but just keep in mind, you're a snail when you're running around with this. Imagine if you have Hauser or a heavy vest on and you're using the M107 CQ. Yeah, forget about rushing. All you can really do at that point is just camp your ass off. So again, portability is extremely low. Port rate of fire is also very, very low. It's In fact, it shares the same uh, rate of fire rating as the LNA-6A1 bolt-action sniper rifle, which obviously everyone knows fires pretty slowly because it's a bolt-action. So, yeah, it fires very, very slowly. Technically speaking, a lot of you guys probably don't know this, but the m 7 cq is actually an automatic sniper rifle. So... I mean, it, by technicality, if for for rooms that say no, uh, you know, that for sniper only rooms that say no automatic or semi autos, um, you should those EMA should probably kick the guys using the M107 variants as well because technically they're automatic sniper rifles, right? But no one gives a shit because they fire too slow anyway. So again, very slow rate of fire at 10. Do not be expecting, uh, do not expect to be firing any, like fast anytime soon with this kind of a kind of a sniper rifle. The accuracy on the M107 CQ is very low at 91. Again, this is very low for a sniper rifle because the l 96 a one sniper rifle has a 90 accuracy, and other some sniper, some assault rifles are more accurate than either the L9 or the M107. So I'm looking at you, the A94 attack OP, and the A94 for that matter, and even the SU-56 Mark II, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, so yeah, the M107 is technically more accurate than the uh, the l 6 a one statistically speaking, but only by one point, and uh, yeah, for what it is, it's not really accurate at all. However, even though I do say that, um, I'll go in depth with this later, but the M107 CQ does have a double zoom scope, so its accuracy is actually a little bit higher, but not by much. But again, we'll come back to that later. The recoil on the M107 CQ is clocked in at 66, which is on the higher end for of recoil um, of the recoil spectrum, at least for sniper rifles. And uh, definitely, you can tell that the M107 has a lot of view kick. Every single variant of the M107 family all have extremely high view kicks. When you even in the first layer of zoom, which is which only zooms in like uh, on a, uh, a two times magnification, I believe. Um, you can still see the scope like freaking jump up as soon as you as soon as you pull the trigger. In fact, when you zoom in on the second scope, which is I think an eight times magnification scope or something like that, um, your view kick is actually your when you, when you fire a shot from your M107, it actually kicks your scope up so high that you don't even see any of your original screen when you uh, when at the top of the recoil. That's how high the recoil is. So it could have something to do with the fact that you're magnified. You you know you're zoomed in really really far, but even even in the even in the first layer of zoom, you have a lot of view kick. So just be careful of uh, camping and sniping with this gun. 
Because if you don't quick switch, that means that you may be thrown off by the gun's recoil, and you may not be able to uh, focus on your target uh, very well due to the high uh, view amount of view kick. So again, keep in mind, recoil is definitely a factor with this gun. Firing modes, we've kind of already covered that. It is technically automatic, but normally uses it as an automatic sniper rifle because it just shoots so damn slow. And it's not really effective anyway, so why bother? The only uh, modification that you can attach to the M107, understandably, is uh, or our magazine modification because traditionally speaking, um, it's very hard to silence bare 50 calibers, even in real life. Um, and typically, combat arms does have a tradition of making guns that come with muzzle brakes. If you look on the image of the M17CQ or any gun that has a muzzle brake, if you guys don't know what a muzzle brake is, it's basically a mechanism or like a yeah, kind of like a mechanism on guns that um, manufacturers put on the ends of the barrels, you know, where the muzzle is, where it'll basically have perforated holes around the muzzle. Uh, or they'll first expand the muzzle, like kind of like a squarish or maybe a circleish uh, design, and they'll perforate holes in them or make them perforate. I don't know what the term is there or the proper term is there. And uh, so that the reason why they do that is so that when you shoot the gun in question, the gases that come out of the that would normally come out straight out of the barrel to push the bullet forward will instead instead of going all out of the uh, you know just straight out of the end of the the tip of the barrel. It'll actually, the muzzle brake will actually ha uh, cause the gases to kind of expand in all directions of where the muzzle brake is perforated. So I believe that's meant to reduce the recoil, if I'm not mistaken, reduce the recoil of the overall gun. So I just, it, by, you know, I guess equalizing the amount of gas, the, you know, the exhaust gas that comes out of the barrel, you know, as a result of priming, you know, pulling, you know, the gun powered bullets gunpowder whatever I'm sure I'm sure if you guys are better gun nuts than me you will you will understand but I believe in the end the uh, muzzle brakes are intended to reduce recoil of the gun and because uh, anyways long story short the muzzle brake is n does not typically allow for a silencer and that's traditionally what combat has done with guns that do come with muzzle brakes or that look like they come with muzzle brakes so unfortunately you cannot silence the uh, m107 CQ long story short that took way longer than I needed to you can also customize the M107CQ in the barrel and trigger aspects. Unfortunately, you cannot um, customize the uh, the piston, which I believe uh, increases the damage. Because why would you need to? It's a 50 caliber sniper rifle. You're probably going to shoot, pe you know, kill most people with one shot anyway. However, I have seen people tank the M107CQ, so don't be surprised when they do tank it. But you, sh they shouldn't really tank it. If you, if they do, then it's just a, a big dose, a big wallop of unluckiness for you, I guess. There's no really other way to put it. That and um, talking about other unique aspects about the M107, um, definitely this will fall under uh, fall under the quirk category. But the M107CQ, all the entire family or the all the variants of the entire family of M107, M107CQ sniper rifles, all have double zoom scopes. Um, the M107 is actually the first sniper rifle uh, to actually con uh, possess. Um, to, uh, you know, a double layer zoom scope in combat arms. This is the first ever gun that uh, that came with, or first ever sniper rifle that came with a double zoom scope. And uh, it's very unique to the M107CQ. I believe the only other sniper rifle outside of the M107CQ family is the TRG SE that does come with the same style of double zoom scope. But other than the TRG SE, uh, the M107CQ, I believe, is the only family to contain double zoom scopes. I could be wrong. There might be an obscure sniper rifle out there that I am forgetting, but for the most part, I believe the m 7 CQ is the only family to, to possess a double zoom scope. So definitely we can put it under the, under the quirks category of this review. Other than that though, the uh, idle sway of the M107 CQ is understandably very very uh, wide because if you do zoom in on the uh, the first layer of zoom, there's not a whole lot of idle sway because it's not magnified very uh, very far. However, once you do magnify uh, it to the second layer of zoom, which is a very deep zoom, um, understandably you will have a lot of idle sway. Just so just be careful of camping or hard scoping with the second layer of zoom on because idle sway may actually be a detriment to your aim. Uh, so just be careful at it. Unless, of course, you're, you're using a steady hand, which, again, you don't have to worry about anymore. But, yeah, just if you do have steady aim, or steady hand, sorry, and you are you do use that perk um, widely or extensively, then using this with in conjunction with M1CQ is probably a very good idea. Other than that, though, um, I don't really know what else to say about the M1CQ. 
Um, it's a great sniper rifle in my opinion. In fact, the M1SM CQSE was the very first sniper rifle that I bought, ever bought for permanent, and that gun actually taught me how to quick switch. Because if you do plan on quick scoping with the m 1 cq or any variant of the m 107 it's possible. I do it. I basically did it all the time back in the day when I first bought my my m 1 CQSE for perm. But uh, just just know that it's very difficult to do. It's because of its very slow portability. Um, people will have an easier time shooting you back because. You know, obviously you're, you're running around quick scoping with a 50 caliber sniper rifle that's really, really heavy. So obviously you're not going to be moving as fast as you know, say other people who are using faster sniper rifles or sniper rifles with more portability. So just do be careful that you will be an easier target for enemy snipers or you know other quick scopers for that matter. But um, I guess the advantages of using M107 CQ are that basically. Um, it can fill any role, really. I mean, even though it's not really ideal for quick scoping, you can still do it very easily because of the half zoom scope and uh, the fact that it does train you to uh, learn, you know, the habit of quick switching. Uh, because that's what this gun was what uh, helped me uh, get in the habit of quick switching all the time and getting a good quick switching rhythm. Because every every time you want to shoot a gun, um, or every time you want to shoot uh, the M1SMCQ while quick scoping, you have to quick switch because unlike the bolt action sniper rifles where they it automatically zooms out for you because this is an automatic uh, or I sorry a bolt action sniper rifle bolt action sniper rifles um unzoom or unscope automatically for you whereas automatics or semi-automatic sniper rifles do not so um it's kind of awkward when you're trying to quick scope and you shoot a bullet thinking that it'll unscope for you except it's not and you try running around except you're still in scope so quick switching is a mandatory must with the uh with the m107 and it definitely teaches you how to quick switch uh reliably Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I think that's going to be it for the review on the M17CQ. Personally, I love the sniper rifle. I mean, it's a freaking it's a freaking 50 caliber sniper rifle for God's sake. How could you how do you, how can you resist that? And um yeah, I've got personal ties with this family because this gun or this family guns was the original sniper rifle family that helped me uh how, that taught me how to quick switch and quick scope and uh yeah, love this thing. Always will and uh Hope you guys uh, give this a chance and uh, enjoy it too. So, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you guys later.